All right, so today I'm gonna to tell you my first drive impressions of the all new 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV. That's it, let's go. All right, so I was fortunate enough to be invited down to Del Mar, California, which if you don't know, is just, you know, it's Southern California, just a little bit uh, north of uh, San Diego to be one of the very first to drive the Chevy Blazer EV. Now, if you didn't know this, they have the EV, uh, you know, LT, RS, there's an SS, but right now for what we were focusing on, we got to drive the uh, RS. Now they make a front wheel drive, a rear wheel drive, and an all wheel drive. We had the opportunity to drive an all wheel drive and the rear wheel drive. So essentially what I did was, of course, I flew from Canada down there, um, and upon arrival, basically what it was, what it was is they shuttled us to this beautiful house, uh, you know, just outside of Del Mar, um, where they had some vehicles waiting there for us. In fact, there was a couple EVs that were just parked there for us to look over. Uh, they had the uh, Blazer EV, of course, RS, uh, all-wheel drive in in the uh, the red color, which is beautiful. They actually had another um, RS in a garage uh, with a bunch of different, you know, uh, there was a... <clears throat> Um, an Ultium platform there. There's some charging uh, stations there just to kind of show you some different things. Uh, you moved outside, there was another uh, Blazer EV. This one was an LT, which was one of the first LTs I'd ever seen, and first for sure I'd ever seen in person. Sharp looking. They had a beautiful uh, Equinox EV RS, all wheel drive, all black. The thing is phenomenal, man. Like, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a really great looking vehicle. And then, of course, being a truck guy, I really also like to see they had the uh, Silverado EV Edition 1 RST, or first edition, I think, sorry, is what they call it, uh, RST there as well. And so basically, uh, the first day, you know, we got there, we, you know, got ourselves situated, we saw those vehicles, uh, and then we had the opportunity to take out the rear wheel drive RS's for a short jaunt around. And, you know, uh, basically from the time I was there, my co-pilot was my good friend, uh, Zane Merva. He's from gm-trucks.com. If you have not checked that website out, I'd be very surprised if you're, you know, following this GM channel. If you haven't, absolutely make sure you do. Uh, they have their website, you know, you know, of course they're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so check them out. But anyways, uh, we ended up taking out the Galaxy Gray version. Uh, this color looks so unique depending on the angle. Um, you know, it could look one of many different colors. And we'd actually taken it down to the beach and it certainly looks sharp in the sunshine. Uh, more impressive than it looks, of course, was how well it actually drove and performed. But as I said, this was a shorter route that we took. So once we arrived at the beach, though, we were asked by multiple people what it was, how it performed, etc. It was actually kind of interesting because, you know, again, we parked it. We were trying to get some pictures taken, but people kept coming over, which, you know, again, is a testament to, you know, the looks of it. And, you know, it's it's pretty polarizing uh, one way or the other, I suppose. But it was also interesting because while we were doing this, a uh, lady in a Tesla actually ended up pulling up behind us. And it was really stark contrast as far as I'm concerned, looking at that blazer in front and a plain old white Tesla behind. Uh, I don't think there's a comparison. You know, in terms of the looks, the blazer just outshone this vehicle, uh, you know, tenfold as far as I was concerned. But the real drive, you know, that was, again, just a short jaunt. The real drive was actually the following day where we were to drive uh, the all-wheel drive RS. Essentially, it was, a, you know, a seaside to summit drive, as they would call it. We started off in the morning on the coast from our hotel in Del Mar and took off up to our eventual destination at the top of Mount Laguna. So obviously that was a good, you know, amount of driving that we were able to do. Now, of course, I was able to be the passenger as well as the driver, of course, you know, you know, uh, with my co-pilot, uh, Zane. Uh, and this is basically what I noticed during that time. You know, first and foremost, um, the power delivered by the 280 horsepower, 330 pound feet of torque motors, because again, it's dual motors, by the way, uh, was more than sufficient. Of course, we're not talking, you know, a thousand horsepower like we're seeing, uh, you know, in the Hummer EV, for example, but it's not it's not a 9,000 pound, 10,000 pound vehicle either. Uh, but we're talking about, you know, of course, a much lighter vehicle. And when you stepped on it at any point, it goes. So it didn't matter where you were, um, you know, in an acceleration standpoint, it, it would move. Uh, not to mention it would ha it has what I would consider to be a conservative uh, EPA rating of uh, range, pardon me, of 279 miles. Now, the next thing I noticed was, uh, you notice how incredibly quiet the cockpit was? Zane and I did not have the radio on and we were able to talk to one another at a normal tone unimpeded by any sounds remarkable you know considering how you know you would you you think you would feel uh, uh pardon me hear more outside noise just due to the fact that there is no engine noise to you know over over top of that and we didn't have the radio on um but the cockpit was remarkably quiet so this sound dampening that they've done um with that vehicle is is remarkable 
Now, speaking of that and the sound though, and I'm not sure if it's gonna come out. I didn't have a mic. I was kind of holding my GoPro um, out the window. Um, and I think we have footage of it, you know, driving up to me and you might be able to hear it in that. But um, the vehicle does have this unique noise that you can certainly hear from the outside. I don't know how to explain it other than it's almost like a musical hum. Um, I'll say without the radio on that it would be something that would actually annoy me, to, if, if I can be honest. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of that. If there's really any downside in the whole vehicle, that would have been it. And I mean, obviously there's reasons for it. Um, but uh, that was something that I, I didn't really notice as much with the Hummer. Um, this one, it seems to, to, to do that more, obviously, upon acceleration. Uh, but regardless of that, it does have a unique noise. And um, again, with the radio up, though, you wouldn't even hear it anyways. Now, switching over to the handling, obviously, that's something to note as well. First and foremost, the, the thing I noted most was the lack of body roll. So the Ultium platform really delivers a balanced platform that keeps it planted to the road. You know, the steering is interesting in that the fact that you can, you know, you can feel the weight, uh, so to speak, behind that steering wheel, but it's also predictable, um, you know, with just a little bit extra weight behind it without being, you know, causing you any kind of fatigue when you're driving. And all that being said, one of the things my co-driver noted, uh, you know, Zane obviously noted, and it was something that I noticed as well, but so I was kind of glad to hear him say that out loud, was um, the Blazer EV still felt like a regular car, like a regular vehicle. How, uh, you know, unlike many EVs, you know, the gas and the brake pedals felt, you know, predictable, consistent. They didn't feel unusual. Um, and I absolutely knew that, uh, you know, that myself as well. And it felt like many other of the, you know, ICE vehicles that Chevrolet, Chevrolet makes. So, you know, it has all the performance and, and everything else that, you know, comes along with having an EV. TV, um, but you're not jumping into something that feels completely foreign to you, um, which is, I think that that's something that's probably very, very hard to do. And so something I definitely appreciated. And speaking of appreciated, another thing I really appreciated was the room, the cockpit room that this vehicle had, this Blazer had. So I stand at six feet, uh, six feet two, I'm definitely not short, um, but I could have more than enough leg room for myself while driving. And I got in behind so somebody the exact same height as myself could have more than enough leg room even behind me. So, you know, that's a true testament uh, to, you know, how how long, uh, you know, uh, you could drive one of these vehicles comfortably. And of course, the seat was very comfortable as well. Aside from amazing looking with this, you know, adrenaline red seats that some of these have, the one we had was black, but, you know, there's other ones that have the adrenaline red. Despite how good it looks, um, it was a very comfortable seat. Again, something that I could take on a 279 plus mile trip before I'd have to stop to uh, to recharge. All in all, I came away overly impressed with the package uh, Chevrolet has put together in the Blazer EV um, and would certainly recommend it to anyone on the hunt for an EV vehicle at the moment. Just, you know, because they, if you didn't know this, they've just actually started to arrive on dealership lots. Uh, I want to, of course, thank Chevrolet so much again for including me in these amazing events to be able to bring you folks out there all this type of information. And as a heads up, because we're just talking about the drive today, there's another video gonna be coming down on my channel, uh, you know, within probably a week, I would suspect, or less, um, of a walk around of the Blazer EV, you know, the one that we'd actually taken out. So you have a feeling of, you know, the ability part of me to, to uh, listen and see, you know, what makes it what it is, you know, what it looks like more so than just talking about the drive. That's coming up. As always, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care.